kind of you you take an input bit stream you modulate it so you kind of the zero and one zero for example in uh, if you're just doing bpsk it just becomes minus zero is, is mapped to uh, to minus one and one is mapped to one so it's it's a kind of um, um, you, you you don't try to send a zero signal you, you always kind of even it's it's an it's it doesn't have a zero in it so you you take a zero and you map it to a minus one so that's a non-return to zero kind of a kind of a signal that that is sent um you know, transmitted over the air uh, so so you first you can you first modulate it and then you do a serial to parallel uh, conversion so you take your 24 bits for example and you convert it into two bits if you're doing QPSK you convert it into two bits per uh, so so you have two bits going into per resource elements and then you take each of these two bits which you had uh, and, 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 in, and in QPS okay let's keep it to one bit I mean that makes life a little bit easier so what you've done is you've, you've taken your your 12 bits you've, you've you've put it one bit into each one of these and then you multiply it by the carrier the subcarrier frequencies f0 to f0 all the way up to nf0 so uh, uh, for one resource block this is 12 of these um, and then you add up this uh, or this kind of uh, bit pattern that you had over here with this and this is what you get is your OFTM symbol over a time period t so so this as we kind of kind of would be a curve that looks something like this you of course then you need to add the cyclic prefix so you you kind of in the first part in the first five microseconds you take the end part of this thing over here and then you you add it over here so now you get your entire um, instead of 66.67 you get your 71 microseconds of your uh, signal that you're you're sending and what you do this is obviously in one uh, slot in the next slot you'll take in the next uh, 12 bits and you'll go through the same process but but let's look at it in at at a at an OF, uh, at an OFTM symbol interval, uh, you'll take that. Uh, this is at your baseband. What you'll do is you'll mix it to the frequency that that you need to be transmitting. So in the frequency domain, for example, let's assume that you are having a 1.4 megahertz of, of frequency bandwidth that you had. So this signal that you've gotten over here. Um, over uh, for 1.4 megahertz you will see that there are six resource blocks so 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 this is f0 all the way up to uh, six times um, uh, 180 kilohertz you multiply this by the carrier frequency so if your carrier frequency is 2.1 gig you will now have this signal essentially translated up to 2.1 gig gigahertz and then and then the entire bandwidth here is 1.4 megahertz of course this is not to scale uh, and and you filter this out and you transmit this over the air you you will amplify it and you transmit it over the air and this is ex this is essentially what your signal that you are generating and sending over the air and this is what your transmitter uh, transmitter does and looks like at least uh, from a, from a theoretical perspective on the receiver you essentially it's it's like a western song you play it in in return and you get a receiver <laughs> so so you you take a low noise amplifier you that since your signal coming all the way from your transmitter to your receiver is attenuated quite a lot uh, you need to amplify it you your signal is sitting up here in 2.1 gig you you multiply this by uh, you multiply this by 2.1 gig you will get a mirror of it in the baseband and you'll also get a mirror of it up here at uh, 4.2 but you essentially filter out everything other than your baseband and you now have your baseband signal coming out over here which has got your 1.4 megahertz worth of signal over here which is essentially your OFTM with your cyclic prefix uh, added to it you remove the cyclic prefix so so you have your so you had your cyclic prefix over here which we had shown like this and this is your your main signal so you get rid of this you delete this 
and what you get over here is your signal which is over 66.67 microseconds now what you want to do is you want to find out all the various components and we said these are all orthogonal to each other so I multiply them with their uh, the the uh, the orthogonal functions themselves and I will get the individual components I when I get the individual components I'll convert them I'll do the opposite of what what I was doing here I'll do a parallel to serial and then I'll demodulate and demodulation here for uh, BPSK is just taking the integral of of each of each of these bits and seeing whether it's a plus one or a minus one what is the energy in each of these uh, symbols is is it a plus one or minus one if it's a plus one I know that a bit one was sent and if it's a minus one I know a bit zero is sent and then out comes your basically if everything you've done right your output bit stream should be the same as your input bit stream so this is at least theoretically how you generate it uh, but obviously having a, a whole bunch of of uh, analog uh, modulators is 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 uh, not very practical to implement and if you look at it this signal uh, the signal over here that that we are getting is actually if this I show it as Xn this signal sorry this signal over here if I represent it as uh, in as a time function x of t this x of t and each one of these components if I just call it x x hat 1, x hat 2, x hat 3. So these bits over here, x hat 4. So this x of t is a summation of x k hat, k is equal to 1 to n, cosine 2 pi f 0, n f 0, or k f 0 t. If you look at this function, and, and, and you've seen this before, uh, if you've done a basic communication course, is that this is your time domain signal, and each of these components here are your Fourier coefficients. So this is a time domain signal periodic in T, okay, this is your time periodic in T, and the, the, if, if this is your time domain in period, each one of these is a Fourier coefficient. So essentially what you're doing is you're going from your frequency domain from your Fourier coefficient, you're going into the time domain. That is what this whole function over here is doing, is that it is taking the signal and going from the, the frequency domain into the time domain. Now, in order to do this digitally, what, get, what gets done is you realize that this whole function is more like an inverse Fourier transform, discrete Fourier transform, and in order to kind of do it in a digital manner, what you create is your inverse FFT block, which takes in your bunch of your coefficients and creates in a discrete time manner creates uh, a signal which is uh, in, in this case since it's all going to be digital you you get a signal which is 0 to t and previously the analog signal was something like this whereas your what you're getting are a discrete data points in the um, in the time domain and that's what your inverse Fourier transform uh, inverse FFT will do and the, this is your your digital signal which is coming in so you do, you're not having a bunch of analog uh, oscillators that are very difficult to to create and maintain whereas this is a math function which is uh, which can be very easily done in computers now it, what you do is you add you do the same thing that you were doing here but on digital bits itself so you in this five microsecond how many ever samples that you had you add those samples over here and now you're getting a bunch of uh, digital bits that are that are coming in here and now you need to convert those digital bits to to analog so you basically pass them through uh, some kind of a digital to analog converter or some kind of a low pass filter 
and out here comes out the same signal that you had by doing this entire analog function so you you essentially have this uh, this 71 microseconds worth of, of signal that that we said had a preamble out here and then we had this this signal which uh, which is uh, which is our OFDM si signal and that's exactly the same thing that you have over here but you did most of your processing out here in the digital domain which is a lot easier to implement in computers so this is how it actually gets implemented and um, and and you essentially replace the box that we were showing there with those analog filters by this uh, digital um, uh, manipulation of uh, inverse Fourier transform uh, with working in the in the in the uh, in the digital domain and adding the cyclic prefix and then doing the D to A and now suddenly this whole thing is essentially just uh, just just numeric methods in in, uh, in a computer and the same thing on the the reverse thing that you're doing on the other side is that your analog signal which is coming out in here you convert it into digital and now you work everything in the digital domain and you go from essentially you're you're doing a, a FFT so you're you're coming out with with your Fourier coefficients over here actually and that's what you are kind of demodulating so your receiver gets replaced by this kind of uh, receiver chain and this is the main um, transmitter and receiver for for OFDM and uh, you would have seen this in uh, you'll see this in, in in quite a few books and this is the uh, the base um, model generator of, of your OFDM signals so why OFDM? I mean, if, if you look at it, what we've covered so far, you must have said anybody who has uh, had at least a graduate level course in, uh, in, in digital communication could have designed this. So why, why wasn't this used uh, some time ago and why is it being used now? I mean, what, what's the main reason that OFDM is, is being used so, so much in LTE and actually it's also going to be the, the um, multiplexing scheme for 5G. Uh, the reason is, as we've covered in our previous slide, is that the OFDM symbols have relatively long duration and by sending these multiple carriers or these multiple 15 kilohertz subcarriers and putting all our information in a whole bunch of subcarriers, we have, a, we have allowed or we can have a much longer symbol period which allows us to add a five, milli, a five microsecond preamble to take care of delay spreads, which is kind of one of the main problems, or, or actually it's one of the main problems, but has been used as, a, as an advantage. So a lot of, if, with, with MIMO, if you don't have multiple, uh, multi-path or delay spreads, you really can't have MIMO. So it's a lot of times something that is a defect, what you think as a, as, as, as a problem, can actually help you a lot if you think uh, think correctly, and that's what MIMO does. But also, we we are with having these 66.67 microseconds, a pretty large value. We can provide a preamble which is fairly long and and lose less than 10 percent of the of the capacity, uh, and and not have intersymbol interference, which is a major headache uh, to solve in practical systems. The other thing is that we have a carrier in, in the frequency domain, we have a carrier of 20 megahertz and this is a huge, uh, this is a pretty, pretty wide carrier and if you look at the 20 megahertz carrier, um, what you're going to have is if you're going to have uh, quite a few um, dips in this carrier and when you have dips you will lose out any information that you're sending out in this part of the frequencies and with OFDM since you're sending out sync signals in various subcarriers over here you will only lose these two or three subcarriers where there are the dips whereas these other subcarriers which have gone through where the channel is in good is is, is having a good uh, uh, gain 
can be decoded correctly and, and this is one of the big advantages of OFDM which uses individual subcarriers so that you can still decode the subcarriers which are going through the channel which have got a good gain and you only do lose those subcarriers where the frequencies are are uh, at, at those parts in the frequency band which are having bad throughput. Um, you, if, if you kind of did CDMA where you take the entire information and spread the in, entire information over this this whole band if you if you lose something here and do something over here reconstructing a CDMA signal when you have lost parts uh, due to channel fading in, uh, in, in in some subcarriers over there becomes uh, is, is very very difficult you, you lose a lot more you'll end up losing sometimes the entire signal so OFDM is uh, resilient to uh, to channel fades and the main reason why it is also being used now the idea has been around for a very long time I think I've, I've read something that right from the 1950s or 60s people had talked about OFDM but having these multiple FFTs and bands of FFTs available and, and, and inverse free fast Fourier transforms available, this processing power has only come in now. So that is why uh, OFDM is, is being used in a lot of the, the, the new systems. So now these are all the good things. Obviously, uh, this is if you don't talk about, about what the problems of OFDM are, then we are like a used car salesman, which we never say what's, what's wrong with it. The one of the main disadvantages of OFDM is which we had covered or at least provided a, a slight hint to you before is that it has a very high peak to average to average ratio. So the signal, your OFDM symbol, especially if you go over six, if you keep increasing your 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 frequency up to six. To 20 megahertz is that in, in if when you're looking at the time domain it has a huge peak and the average is kind of is, is very low so your peak to average ratio is is very high and this is a problem for your amplifier because it needs to operate over a very high dynamic range uh, all the way to, to those peaks to these smaller average values and this really becomes uh, a, a lot of problem when you are in much higher bandwidth like 6 megahertz or, or 20 megahertz bandwidth. Um, so that is uh, the reason why uh, we end up having uh, uh, OFDM in the downlink because there in the in the downlink you can have these high fidelity amplifiers that work over this uh, entire dynamic range um, whereas in the uplink direction we can't afford to have these uh, high fidelity amplifiers and that's where OFDM is not used and then single carrier OFDM is is used uh, so so at the end uh, what we found out is that you've kind of got a very nice uh, Ferrari which can go 0 to 60 in, in less than two seconds Whereas, but you better be careful that this thing makes a, makes a lot of noise. So you better not start it and run it on a Sunday morning. Otherwise, all your neighbors are going to be uh, pretty pissed off at you uh, because of the loud noise that you're going to be making.